I have been, and always shall be, your friend. Join me on Infinite Prattle for the most shocking film revelations, part two. Hello, and welcome to Infinite Prattle! Unscripted, unedited prattle on everything. Hosted by me, Stephen. Listen, like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy the show. Hello, welcome to Infinite Prattle. Thank you very much for joining me. And live long and prosper. If you understood that intro, we can definitely be friends. Um, so yes, today I thought I'd do a follow-up to uh, something I did a few episodes ago. It wasn't it wasn't too long ago, but I enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed talking about things I like, obviously. Um, so yeah, so film revelations. So if you, if you understood the intro, yes, we can be friends. And two, um, I hope it pulled on the heartstrings as it did me. Uh, because that is the line that Spock says in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, when he dies. Oh, by the way, spoiler alerts! Um, um, yes, because there will be lots of spoiler alerts today. That's my spoiler alert, spoiler alert alarm. That's, that's the alarm I use for everything, to be fair. Um, yeah, so, there will be spoilers. I just spoiled one before, telling you that. But you, you knew, you knew that. That's an old film now. It's an old. If you if you didn't know that and and you like Star Trek, then what have you been doing yourselves? What did yourselves? I'm dropping everything out. Hang on. Oh, excuse me. Oh God, this it started well. Um, yeah. So Star Trek, the Wrath of Khan, uh, Star Trek Two, should I say, the Wrath of Khan? Uh, one of my ultimate favorite Star Trek stories, films. Um, brilliant. I just love it. In fact, talking about it makes me want to watch it. Um, it's ace. Just it, for me, it has made everything, and um, it was the thing, the film that kind of saved the franchise in some sense. Because I think the motion picture was fell on its ass a bit. And there's a thing about the, the even numbered ones being the best ones out of all out of all of them. Uh, and for, in some sense, it does run true. But you know, I like them all. It's Star Trek, anyway. So in Star Trek: The Wrath of Khan, it sees the character of Khan. Um, resurface, and there's a whole story there. I'm not going to go into it. You know, if you've seen it, you've seen it. If you haven't, you haven't. Basically, Khan um, is a genetically modified human and uh, ha had been banished, and he gets uh, found and basically managed to steal a ship. And oh, there's a whole thing. And basically, Kirk and him have a have a have a grudge match. He Khan Kirk doesn't realize Khan's alive, and um, they have a fight in a nebula, and there's a Genesis device which can, like, repopulate planets and completely, like, a dead planet, re regenerate it and bring it back to life, and basically Khan kind of detonates this this device and um, to try and destroy the Enterprise, basically. Uh, and the Enterprise is terribly, terribly damaged, and there's a warp core breach, and they're looking at evacuating the ship, and Spock, being the hero that he is, uh, without donning a radiation suit, which probably wouldn't have saved him anyway, because I think I think Scotty says there's no hope we have to evacuate anyway, because uh, they think even people that have been trying to save it have still been injured. Spock just climbs in, uses his superior logic, apart from the fact he's going to die from radiation poisoning, and basically fixes the problem and contains the warp core breach and saves the Enterprise, but um, the amount of radiation that he sustains um, is... It's, it's too much, basically. Um, and he, he says to Kirk, who, who's an admiral at that point, he says, do not grieve, admiral. It is logical. The needs of the many outweigh. And Kirk says, the needs of the few. And then Spock says, all the needs, or all, all the one. Um, yeah. Um, and then they have, a, they have like, a, a lovely little moment. And uh, basically, um, Spock says the, the line that I said at the beginning of the, the podcast there. Um and it oh just thing like gets me like the the emotion on the faces and and seeing like William Shatner's like William Shatner's never been been pegged really as a as a probably an amazing actor um he does what he does well but as the character of 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 Kirk you know in that moment you could, I think you could really see the emotion in in what was his friend dying in front of him um yeah and, and for me as a kid watching it I was like they can't kill Spock. What? Really? They, 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 
they they seem to have killed him, and then you're almost expecting like a twist um, that he's going to come back to life. Like you know, he's a, he's a Vulcan. He's not like, human. Um, he's he's died too young really for a Vulcan because they they live a lot longer than humans do. Um, and you're almost expecting like towards the end them say, oh, you know, we thought he had died, but he regenerated and now he's back alive again. But he's just a bit ill and he's in intensive care or whatever. Uh, and then it ends with his funeral, and you're like, oh. Um, he's dead. Uh, I mean, spoiler alert: he comes back in. He comes back in number three. Um, but as as a, as a thing, that was probably the one of the earliest revelations I saw as a child that that I didn't see coming, and I was like shocked. And I was like, I need to see the third one now. What the hell's going on? Um, yeah, and because he's you'd never see that in films really, like such a major character being killed off in such a you know in such a way. Uh, you always kind of expect them to be, to be you know, uh, resurrected. Uh, but yeah, that that really shook me as a as a kid seeing seeing him die uh, and the emotion of it. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a big thing. And uh, me and my mate Scott love, love Star Trek. And we've, we've there's an episode I think it's back in series two, maybe maybe series one when I started having guests on. Scott was like one of the first people I had on. We talked about this, and we always say that uh, he's he's Spock to my Kirk. And I'm um, I'm Riker to his Picard. Uh, that's how geeky we are. And I don't care. I do not care because I'm more of the Kirk captain, and he's more of the Picard captain. And I'm more of the the Riker first officer, and he's more of the Spock first officer. And we're okay with that. Um, but yeah, that's that's the first that's the first shocking one that I remember as a kid. Uh, and the second one is again spoiler alerts is the film The Mist. Um, and this is a weird, weird film. Uh, I've never read the book, so I've never really read the the novelization that that spawned the film. Uh, it's a Stephen King story, um, and basically, from what I can remember, and quickly googling, basically, a mist descends on a town, and it's near some military compound, and weird creatures are in the mist, and they're killing people. And I'm not, I'm not even sure where these creatures have come from, whether they've come from another dimension or it's some like experiment gone wrong. I can't quite remember. I'm sure you guys know better than me. Uh, but basically what happens at the end of the film, and this is probably different in the novelization, and the novelization um, leaves the end a bit ambiguous, and has a longer driving sequence at the end, but the main character like basically drives away, he's, he's got his wife and his son in the car, and they run out of fuel and they haven't managed to get out of the mist, so they just know at some point the monsters are going to come for them and they won't be able to defend themselves, and he's got he's got a gun with him, but he only has two bullets. So he he basically um, they make an agreement that he's gonna have to kill them basically, and then he'll sacrifice himself to the monsters because it's the only way to do it. Rather than he doesn't want his his child to go through a horrible death. Uh, same with his wife. So he, he he you see like the outside view of the car, and you see just the flash and the muzzle flashes through the like steamy kind of misty kind of imagery. Uh, and it's really shocking. I, I wasn't expecting that ending. Now again, kind of like the Spock one. I was like, "Oi, they've got away!" Like they'll just drive and they'll meet some military people, or they'll end up getting to like a safe place or um, some last human kind of uh, safeguarded area. And uh, they do not. They they quite literally um, die at the end. Uh, and I think what's worse, they don't all die because. He shoots his son. I presume. Well, this is the order. I presume he does it. He shoots his son, then he shoots his wife, uh, to save his son seeing his wife die. Um, so you see the two shots go off, and then he gets out of the vehicle, or he gets to go out, the, or he's gonna get out of the vehicle. Um, and then he sees lights in the mist, and the mist starts to clear, and there's the whole load of military people there, and all the military, basically there to rescue him, and he gets out of his car, and he's like, "Oh, right, the military's here." If I'd have just waited like ten minutes, we'd have been saved. And he he just is like screaming because he obviously just shot his family. Uh, and it's just I think that's worse than him just shoot. I think that's worse than just having him shoot himself as well. Because it's just like he's just had to shoot his family, thinking he's gonna die as well, and he'll like you know possibly be reunited in any afterlife that could be. And um, no, um, dead. <laughs> now, from reading online, apparently the ending of the actual book. There's like a longer driving sequence when they're in the when they're in the when they're in the car and they have other people with them. I believe. I think I, I don't know. I've never say I've never read it. 
uh, just to get a quick synopsis off the internet. And they, they're heading towards some sort of hotel, uh, which they think might be a safe place, but then it kind of leaves it a bit ambiguous. By the sounds of it, it's written from like a writer's point of view, very much like a H.G. Wells kind of uh, story. Um, yeah, and then the, the book ends, but obviously the uh, the director came up with this new ending, and apparently Stephen King basically said he wished he'd have thought about it. So I got this little bit off, um, uh, I think it was off IMDB, I think it was, uh, about The Mist. Um, I think it was off IMDB. I can't quite remember now. I just Googled it, so it'll be on the internet somewhere. So credit to, I didn't write this, credit to whoever wrote it. So it said, The Mist based on Stephen King's no- novel, um, uh, Frank Darabont, who wrote and directed The Mist, Darabont, Darabont, uh, he directed the mist, changed the ending uh, to one so staggering that King probably wished, oh no, probably, he says, he says probably wished he'd written it himself, so maybe Stephen King didn't say he wanted to write it himself. I've uh, made, them, made mixed up the facts in my own brain now from reading it, reading it earlier. Um, uh, David, who is played by Thomas Jane, who was the Punisher and has been loads of other things, his son and a few other escape the store in the car. David shoots them all and then runs out of fuel uh, when they've run out of fuel. Uh, but his, his one bullet short, so David gets out of the car to finish finish himself, to give himself to the creature. I can't read. So basically, yeah, so maybe in the film there's other people in the car. I don't. I only remember the kid and the, the woman being in the car, the, the mum. So it says David shoots them all when they run out of fuel, but he's one bullet short, so David gets out of the car to give himself to the creatures. But... As he does, the mist clears, and military trucks full of survivors pass him, and he falls to his me- knees in utter shock and despair. And it says that the book book ending is ambiguous to the longer driving sequence, which they basically heading towards a hotel. But I've not read it. But yeah, that's um, it's horrific, really, isn't it? And I, I remember that really shocking me. I watched that when I was like in my early twenties. I was probably early twenties when it came. Maybe maybe late twenties when I watched it. And I'm not I'm not a ma- massive fan of horror films, but I kind of liked. Uh, I kind of liked uh, the actor uh, Thomas Jane. Uh, I thought he was great in The Punisher and a few other things I'd seen him in. So um, I thought I'd, I thought I'd give it a try, and uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. And then was completely blown away by the ending. And in some sense, when I watched it, it kind of spoiled it for me because I was hoping they were going to survive because I kind of liked the characters and especially him. And I, I kind of wanted him to I wanted them to win. And I think that he he kind of did in some sense because he didn't die and was saved. But then he has to live with all that bloody. Um, the the emotional uh, baggage of of basically murdering his family, thinking he was doing the right thing, crazy, crazy, crazy. Good film. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's worth going to watch, even if you know that ending. It's worth worth a little watch. It's it's quite a good film. It's not the best, but it's 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 pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, and then the last film is is kind of like a an, another section of a film I did on the last one, which is Alien. Uh, you know I love Alien uh, and Aliens and all the franchise stuff around it. Spoke about enough on the show. Um, sorry if you're not an Aliens fan. Um, but this is basically from the film Aliens. So the last time I spoke about like the reveal kind of at the end of the Aliens on the Narcissus, uh, the lifeboat, and uh, has actually sneaked on there before Ripley even knew and has kind of tucked himself away, or herself, or them. I don't know. I don't know what they are. Alien has tucked itself away. Um, and uh, this bit is more about the uh, chest burst scene. Now... I before I watched Alien, I'd seen Aliens, and I'd seen the chestburst scene in Aliens, and I knew there was a chestburst scene in Alien because it's quite a famous reference. It's like referenced in Spaceballs, like it's been referenced on British comedy. So I I knew that that thing. I've seen I'd seen like clips of that that scene where John Hurt has the has the the beast so to speak uh, rip out of him, but not not in full. Never seen the build up to it. Never seen like that whole like breakfast. Is it breakfast or dinner scene? Or I don't I don't even what meal they're eating. Um, I've ne- never never seen that in its entirety. So when I did watch it in full, I was I was genuinely shocked because it was so convincing. Like even though that film was like out in nineteen seventy nine, it was such a convincing scene for me. I was just like, oh my god, like that's terrifying. Like when the alien runs off, the effects aren't as good. Um, I think that's that's the only bit that lets it down for me. But the actual the the chest bursting, how how John Hurt starts to choke, and everyone's like, "Oh, what are you doing? It's because you've been eating too quick and stuff." Because he says he's starving, um, and how he starts convulsing, and then how the thing bursts out of him. It was 
honestly insane. So I've got I've got this little excerpt because I think the reason it was so convincing, and I found out this years later, uh, being a fan, um, and I knew this uh, is because the cast didn't really know what to expect. So I've got this little excerpt, and this was from uh, IMD, IMDb trivia. Uh, so it says here. The rumour that the cast, except for John Hurt, did not know what would happen during the chestburster scene is partially true. Everyone had read the script, which explicitly stated that something would be coming out of Kane's chest, but they did not know specific details. For instance, Veronica Cartwright did not expect to be sprayed with blood, so her reaction is completely genuine. And in, and in rough footage of shots of, of shots of that scene, it shows her slipping over on the blood and then getting up again without breaking character. Sigourney Weaver related that they suspected that something dramatic was about to happen, but when they got to set, transparent screens screens were set up and the crew were wearing raincoats. Tom Skerritt admitted years later that he was the only one besides her that knew exactly what was coming. He had been following director Ridley Scott around to learn the process of filmmaking, and he'd been present during some meetings where the chestburster effects were being discussed in detail, and he was of course requested to keep this and the specifics to himself in order to elicit genuine reactions from the other cast members. And a lot of directors are, are, are you know, known for doing stuff like this. I think Ridley Scott does this quite a lot in his films. I think James Cameron does it. And a lot of directors do this, where they try and keep things secret from the from the, from the the actors so that when they shock them, it is a genuine shock. So they'll say, right, this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, and I want you to be shocked. Stay in character. Make sure you stay in character. And then they'll do something different, and they're actually saying you must stay in character no matter what happens. And it and it's it it does get and it an amazing impact from that scene. Um, the blood spray. I mean, like Veronica Cartwright, you can tell that she wasn't expecting to get blood in the face, and um, yeah, they're just all completely like, what the hell just happened? Um, I can't think of the, can't think of the character's name. I can't. Um, God, what's he called? I can't think of the character's name. Brett. I can't think of the actor's name. Um, I wish my brain would work more. <laughs> let me get let me get the name up. Give me two seconds. Alien. There we go. So we've got so yeah. Harry Dean Stanton played Brett, and he just looked like what the hell just happened. He seemed like really impressed, and then Yafit Koto that played Parker. I think his reaction is probably like one of the best. He is just he he literally he, he looks like he's just stood there going, "What the fuck? Like, like what the hell is that thing?" Uh, and I think that's the I think that's the best thing about it. Like, is the is literally the fact that our reaction, their reaction, is mirrored by the the watcher because the the watcher of the film knows there's going to be some sort of alien, but they have no idea it's going to burst out of some guy's chest. They have no idea what this creature is going to become. And I think that's the genius of it. It's absolutely, it, it's, it, but it's one of the shocking things in that film, for me is is, one is that it's is I I won't cover this in a second, but I'll go through this now. Um, is is the actual alien uh, face hugger jumping out of the egg? That's like what the hell's going on? And when they bring it back to the ship, you're like, what the hell is that? And then it's the the actual chest burster. And then for me, it's the narcissist scene where you're thinking. I don't know where this is going now because have you killed the monster? Are you going to make an escape? I don't understand. How is it? How's the film going to end? And then it kind of like, oh, the monster's in the ship. Oh, yes, fair enough. Um, but yeah, an amazing, an amazing film um, with multiple things that shocked me. Maybe because I was a child when I watched it, or, or not mature enough as I was, I was a teenager. Um, so maybe I wasn't mature enough to see these things coming, but. Um, and been shielded enough from it to not know what the exact details of the film were. But yeah, ama amazing, amazing stuff. Again, if you've even if you've not seen any of these films, they're still worth a watch, even though I'm spoiling the uh, shocking bits. Um, yeah. So, what are you, what are your like films that shock you? Do you have any? Let me know. Comment uh, and let me know. Um, do you agree with my selections? Do you think uh, did I did I cop out and add Alien twice? Mm, maybe. Um, <laughs> it's just such a good film. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for listening. Um, if you like the episode, give it a share. Really appreciate it. But uh, until next time, you've been listening to Infinite Prattle. I've been Stephen. Take care of yourself. And remember, keep on prattling. You've been listening to Infinite Prattle! 
Thanks for listening. If you liked this episode, go back and listen to some others. And please continue to listening. Your support is muchly appreciated. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll speak to you all again soon. Take care.